Hey everyone, welcome back to BDG Reviews. Uh, we're having another episode of My Theory. And like I said on a past video, this is probably going to be maybe a long video, I don't know. I am dealing with the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Yeah. So, if you haven't seen one of these videos before, the basic premise of it is uh, someone's waved magic wand and I have been given control of a series. I can, you know, remake it. I can, like, do sequels to it. Whatever. You know, it is what it is. But there are a few ground rules. Every Everyone has a different set of ground rules. So I'm going over the ground rules for this one right now. The ground rules for this particular video are... The first six Star Wars movies... Are canon. So that's that's set in stone. That's the way it is. Um, the sequels. I'm I'm making them. So you know it's there's no there's no rules there. The only rules sequel wise are that it needs the same cast of characters. For the main roles. So, you know, you gotta have Ray, you gotta have Finn, you gotta have Poe, unfortunately. You know, um, everyone else I'm free to do with whatever I want with it. And, um, so yeah. That's, that's where, that's where I'm going for. I'm allowed to bring in any type of, um, you know, uh, like, expanded content if I want. You know, uh, stuff from Legends or whatever. I can bring that in. That's not a problem. So, let's get started. First up. Now, these this is stuff I'm getting out of the way right at the beginning, so you know. Palpatine is not alive. Snoke is the main villain. Kylo Ren exists, but he is not Ben Solo. Ray is not Ray Palpatine. And Finn was never a stormtrooper. So already we were off to a different start. So here we go. This is how I envision this. It starts off on a planet. We don't know what planet this is. We just, you know, are sweeping shots over this planet. And you come, you know, through different, like, forests, through all things. It goes around the entire planet. shows you, like, every bit of it. Then it comes upon a temple. This is a Jedi temple. This is Luke's Jedi temple. And there are hundreds of students being trained as Jedi. Okay, so picture that, you know, they're all going, they're like, there are other teachers, like, training them. Luke's not there. We don't see Luke. We hear from, we hear some discussion from some of these Jedi Masters. They're saying essentially, you know, Luke has gone off to, he's gone off to search for something. You know, we don't know what it is, but, you know, him and, you know, it, like, to his two apprentices, they have, they have left, and essentially left all of these people in charge. So, that, that's what we got going on. In the meantime, we, we shoot back and there's a shot of space. And you just see Star Destroyers coming in. I'm not talking two or three. I'm talking like a freaking armada of Star Destroyers come in. And from the main one, a ship launches. It's not your basic TIE fighter. It's something a bit different. And it comes down, and as it's entering the atmosphere, you know, you get the Jedi looking up. They're like, kind of like, Luke, what is this? You know, they, they don't quite know what's going on, but... You know, something's a bit off, so, you know, the masters start getting the students together and everything. 
the ship comes down, lands, door lowers, and out of this ship walks Kylo Ren, followed by an entire battalion of black armored stormtroopers. So, we know from Legends, Purge Troopers, and essentially you get you get almost a remake of Anakin and the 501st attacking the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Except this time it's Kylo Ren running this show and you got an army of Purge Troopers. And they start decimating everyone. Now, the big difference between here is where Anakin, you know, went and took out the younglings. Um, no. Kylo Ren is walking through, knocking people out of the way. No care, whatever. He's going after the Masters. The Purge Troopers are taking out the the younglings and all, like, the 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 people who are learning and the people who are, like, you know, just the, the, the rabble, if you will. The people that are there to, you know, clean up the temple. They're taking all of them out. They're taking out everybody. In the meanwhile, Kylo is walking down towards this group of masters. Knights his lightsaber. It's a cross guard, you know, like... It's the same lightsaber we see from the Star Wars sequels. And he just lays into these masters. He says there's about ten of them. And he manages to single-handedly defeat every one of these masters. And they're using different styles. He's adapting to every style that they're throwing at him. He's changing, like... He'll be fighting like maybe two-handed, then he'll swap it around and do like a reverse grip, and he'll be he'll be switching up styles all around. The scene would end with him taking out like the final master. We back up and temples on fire. And uh they get back in their ship. They're heading up, and then they just they order it. All the Star Destroyers just start bombarding the planet with with fire. You then cut ahead. Six months later. Luke has returned. He he when he was out with his two with his two students um doing what they're doing. We haven't brought that up yet. He felt something was definitely wrong, so they go back. They come back to essentially a glassed planet. Like, everything is just... Think, um... How Mandalore ended up in, uh... The Mandalorian. Same basic thing. Everything... Everything is dead. This... This entire planet is now dead. All the life forms are... Are destroyed. They land their ship. They get out. It's Luke... With his, with his two Padawans. Ray and Finn. Luke is devastated by what's gone on here. Luke then decides... Like Yoda did... At the end of the, the prequel trilogy... He's failed all these people. So... He has to go into exile... He has to focus on the Force. He needs to, f like, find out, like, why did this happen? Why couldn't I save all these people? In the meantime, Ray and Finn, his two pupils, are having very different reactions to this. Finn is very much, like... There's got to be someone alive. There, there, there has to be someone. Like he's very hopeful. Like there's still, there has to be someone. You know, we we got to find someone. Ray, on the other hand, is angry, very angry, and it becomes pretty evident pretty quickly that the whole idea is these two students are essentially two sides of the same coin. 
Ray very much is more focused on the pull to the dark side is stronger with her. And Finn is more, you know, more about like the hope and everything. He's trying to, you know, keep it together, if you will. So Luke's going to go into, into seclusion. You know, he's going to like figure this out. He sends Finn and Ray to his sister, Princess Leia, who is still married to Han Solo. They have some kids, you know? Um, kids that were going to be attending this Jedi temple. They thought at first, you know, that, that Luke had been killed because, you know, he wasn't there. Everyone, the, everyone on the planet is dead, so they they just assumed he was dead. But then Finn and Ray show up, and they're like, "No, you know, you know, Luke's not dead. You know, we were away from the planet when this happened. He's he's gone into seclusion. He needs to he he needs to essentially work on himself. He needs to figure out what what went wrong. How how come he didn't." foresee this coming. In the meantime, the remnants of the Empire, you know what? Screw it. We'll call them the First Order. The First Order are amassing a huge armada. Kylo Ren walks into the giant, like, uh, chamber room where, um, Snoke is. And he's very... S Snoke is very happy with what, uh, Kylo Ren has done. It just, it worked out for him. He did everything he wanted to do. There's no... There's no backstabbing from other members of the thing. There's there's no hicks, let's just say that, you know. Um, and Snoke is talking to who we now know is like, you know, his apprentice in Kylo Ren. And he's he's essentially saying, you know, like like you like you've done it, you know? You this was like your final test. You've, you've like passed. You are you're like you're good to go. Um, he puts him in charge of the entire first order with Snoke up here. We then learn Snoke's identity. Snoke is his name, but he has a Sith name. His Sith name is Darth Plagueis. Yeah, Darth Plagueis the. Master of the Emperor. He's not dead. Essentially what happened, it we learned this in like with Snoke talking to uh Kylo Ren. That yeah, everything happened pretty much exactly like Palpatine said. You know, he poisoned him in his sleep. And then, you know, he I just you know, like well I Taken him out, just jettisoned him out into space. What he didn't know was this wasn't just something that was expected. Plagueis knew this was going to happen. Not that, you know, he didn't know necessarily it was going to happen right then, but he, you know, all Sith Lords expect it. But not just that, he'd made plans beforehand. He'd spent many years learning how to create life via the Force. And the way that's done isn't the way, you know, not with a bunch of witches doing something, no. Essentially, a world is chosen. This world was Tatooine. And... Essentially, on this world, 
the dark side is pushed to the forefront. So it's a like it, it's a very dark side centric world. You know, at the time, you know, we're talk we're still talking about the time before the empire, you know, so there's you know, there's no Sith that we that are officially around, but a lot of bad shit's going down there, you know. There's a reason, you know, they talk about like Mos Eisley is like, you know, like a hive of scum and villainy or whatever. And what this would do into this environment, you would introduce someone born with a very high midichlorian count. Hence, Anakin Skywalker. This is done through, you know, through breeding and everything. This is like, this goes back hundreds of years. Plagueis has been preparing this for years. So essentially, like, Anakin's mother's mother, mother, you know, like a hundred generations back was all leading to this. It was to bring someone with a high midichlorian count. And the idea would be that someone with a high enough midichlorian count could, in the right situation, in a planet that has high dark side energy, but they, but the person themselves was kind of like not, not Sith, if you will. You know, they're kind of just neutral. That would be what brought about the quote unquote chosen one. Because the force would be okay. This planet has a hell of a lot of dark side energy. We need to balance this out. Normally, this would just be somebody who would be who would be born, and you know who would maybe rise up to be a Jedi. Maybe not. Maybe they'd just become like a politician or something, and try to push the world into like a more stable, a stable situation. But because of the high midichlorian count, it was almost guaranteed he would be picked up. Now. The original plan would have been Plagueis would have gone and picked up Anakin and trained him as the next Sith Lord. You know. That isn't what happened. The events of the prequels happened, you know, and, you know, Plagueis is dead at this point. In all these... In all this studying to develop this technique... He also learned how to shut down his body. That doesn't stop damage happening. So you you know what Snoke looks like. You know the jagged up face and everything. That's all due to due to essentially shutting down his own body. He went into a, essentially a suspended animation. Eventually, he rises from it when he realizes that you know. Palpatine's gone now. You know, the the one that essentially, quote-unquote, put him there is no longer a, a threat. So he brings himself back, essentially, and takes command of what is left of the Empire. Now, you gotta remember, this is a guy that, like you like said, he was there since the beginning, he, he knew all the stuff leading up to this, so it was just a natural a natural thing to give him the control. Make him essentially the next emperor. Yeah. But uh, Plagueis has other plans. So, he puts Kylo Ren in charge of the First Order. Kylo Ren goes about essentially trying to reclaim the Empire. But it's not that easy, you know. The Republic has taken over, you know. Um, the Republic is doing pretty well, honestly. You know, there... You have your elements that um, 
you know, like any bureaucracy, you know, you're going to get your, your corrupt people. You're going to get, you know, your stuff like that. That exists in, in the Republic as well. So essentially when Kylo Ren takes charge of the First Order, his order essentially is like, okay, we've, we've dealt with the Jedi. They, they are gone. We don't have to worry about them. We're going to be smart about this. We are not going to just take over by force right away. We're going to start talking. We, we have spies everywhere. We're going to start causing discontent within the Republic. And it's working. You know, uh, for a long time, there's been, you know, little rumblings of like people not being happy with the way the Republic's being run and everything. And essentially, all of these people are waiting for a trigger. And that trigger is going to be when the First Order flies this frickin' armada of Star Destroyers right up to Coruscant and destroy the entire planet. That's the plan. You know, it's going to be a, like a one giant thing, but they've already set all the groundwork so that, you know, there people are going to rise up and they're like, see, this is what happens. The Republic aren't that stupid. They, they, they know that, you know, the Empire's not done. They've actually adapted... Death Star technology. And, you know, it's not at the level of Death Stars, but, you know, they have multiple orbital platforms around Coruscant, around other planets, that that have, you know, planet-killing capabilities, but not expressly for that purpose. It's more like a defensive type thing. So, next thing you know, you know, we, we got like a, a group of people essentially becoming like a pseudo, not even a pseudo rebellion. They are the remnants of the rebellion. Princess Leia, Han Solo, his kids, now Finn and Rey who are with them. And they realize that there's a much bigger threat from the First Order than even the Republic are really, you know, they're not, they're, they're not taking it seriously enough. They just think, oh, it's, it's a splinter group of the Empire. It, it is what it is. It's not good. We have these, you know, mini Death Star things. We're fine. You know, we're good. Um... Leia and Han, they, you know, and all, like, the generals of the Republic, of the, of the Rebellion, essentially, they know, you know, no, we, we need to, we need to try to nip this in the bud sort of thing. So they take the, the again, the remnants of the Republic. So essentially, you know, you're, they're in older ships, you know, they got their X-Wings or whatever, you know, the Republic has built up their stuff, you know, but, the, you know, this isn't... You know, they don't think the First Order is a threat, really. So, they they pack up their old ships, you know, and they launch out. They have learned where the First Order are amassing their armada. They got this from a piece of... I, I want to say like, like an anonymous tip, essentially. They, they were sent to, sent to something saying like, you know, this this is this is where it's going on. It came in on like an old Jedi encrypted data line sort of thing. So you know, they like this isn't something that the Empire would be using. This isn't something that the First Order would be using. So they they assume okay, okay, you know, this must be maybe from Luke. You know, they don't know, but they know, okay, here's where this is. 
So they get their ships. They they're getting up there. They're preparing for battle. They're loading everything up. It's a long way. They got to jump through hyperspace time and time and time again. So they rush. They're they're going there. They're going to deal with this right away. They jump into the system. Nothing there. All there is is a giant spatial anom an anomaly. This is this is an anomaly that's like shooting out energy like lightning beams almost like all over the place um they don't know what this is but it it decimates the it decimates the rebellion You're, they're left with very few ships left they hobble out of there in the meantime Worst has come to worst. First order of attack to Coruscant. What they've done is they've used the they've used their uh, their people. You know they've used the discontented members of the Republic to take command of these Death Star platforms and. They attack full force with this entire armada. Think again the the destruction of the Jedi Temple in the prequels. Same basic thing, except this is going on across the entire planet. You know, they are places on the planet that can't be dealt with, that are like locked down are being obliterated by the Death Star platforms. The movie ends at this point. This is the first of the trilogy. It ends with Kylo Ren walking into the main hall of the Republic where uh, Palpatine declared the formation of the Empire. And... Everyone's dead. Their bodies strewn all over the place. He walks right up to the main podium and just stands there. And then that's where it ends. So, there you go. First movie's done. Essentially, the... I'll call them the Rebellion. The Rebellion have been decimated... Coruscant is no more. You know, it's... It, the, the planet still exists, but it belongs to the First Order at this point, and they are not... They're not taking any chances. They saw what happened with, like, you know, with the Empire and everything. They are wiping out everybody. There are, you know, like, if you're not with the First Order, you're against them, and you are being dealt with accordingly. So we end with Kylo Ren standing triumphant at the center of the Re the Republic amphitheater, if you will. So there, first movie, done. Starting the second movie. We follow Finn and Rey. They've survived, along with Han Solo and, like, you know, the, the main, like, generals of the Republic. They've survived, and they are attacking various outposts of the First Order. Finn and Rey are using their Jedi powers, like, very much without, um... Without uh, cause for concern, they're just they're just going at. It. They know it's like th this is a war. This is what we were gonna do. In the meantime, Ray is falling more and more to the dark side. You know, her anger is making her a very powerful opponent. And 
as a result, it gets the attention of Kylo Ren. He's been hearing whispers about, like, these, like, you know, a couple of Jedi that are, like, doing a lot of damage. And one takes his interest, because there, there's a strong dark side connection here. So, he decides he's going to find this, he's going to find this, uh, this Jedi. So he sets out, he delegates to other people to essentially run his new empire and uh, tells him essentially to focus on locking down control of everything. Lock down Coruscant, lock down these important planets. Like, these are what we need to maintain control. You take these, I am going after this, this force user. In the meantime, you know, there's a definite rift forming between Finn and Rey because of this, essentially this, this difference in thought about like how much aggression to use on these situations. In the meantime, Poe Dameron who's now, he's a general in the uh, rebellion. You know, he's he's leaning more towards Ray's point of view. He's like, you know what, we, we have to take the fight to the Empire. You know, uh, no one else is doing it. Like, like, no one else can do it. We are the only ones that can do it. And they come up with a plan. This plan is something lifted right out of the sequel trilogy. So, yeah, I'm actually using something from them. They start setting up a base. A very special base. That contains a giant laser. Yeah, I'm talking, you know, like a star killer base or whatever they call it. Um, they essentially, can, they, they turn Elam into a giant weapon. In the meantime, Kylo Ren has been following them around. Ray knows that he's coming, and they are going to have a bit of a showdown. It, it, it's coming. As he, as they're heading towards Ilum, where... You know, where he knows, like, you know, this this is where it's I'm being drawn to. This is where this other Force user is. You know, they've been essentially starting work on what would become, you know, Starkiller Base. He's going, you know, he's, like, flying his ship there. He has it on, like, autopilot. He's in the back meditating. He has... The remnants of Darth Vader's helmet. Like like the Kylo in the sequels does. And he talks to it. We, we, we only hear what he's saying. You know, like... He's like, yes. Like, that's right. You know, uh, he's having a conversation.